Ridley Scott's had a hand in many films, whether it's as a producer, a director, or both. Naturally, he has dozens of films on his to-do list, many of which are never made. You've got projects like The Hot Zone, Blood Meridian, and sequels to Blade Runner and Alien. But one of the most interesting projects would have been his follow-up to Black Hawk Down, a period piece called Tripoli. The film was to tell the true story of William Eden, the American consul to Tunisia under the presidency of Thomas Jefferson. Furious that Yusuf Karamanli, the ruler of Tripoli, has enslaved Americans and commits acts of piracy, Eden decides to lead a revolt against him. To do so, he enlists the help of Yusuf's exiled brother Hammett, a man more supportive of Western interests and values. Eden and Hammett lead a small army and defeat Yusuf's forces at the Battle of Derna. However, before they could reach Tripoli, the U.S. ended the conflict and denied Hammett the throne. The film would not only have reunited Scott with Russell Crowe after their 2000 hit Gladiator, would also have been the feature film debut of screenwriter William Monaghan. Yet even with Scott and Crowe leading the project, production would be pushed back multiple times until the film entered development hell, where it has stayed ever since. But what went wrong with such a promising movie? The date in which Monaghan started working in Tripoli is a bit hard to pin down. One site claims that the first draft was completed in 1990 under the title of Captain Eden. However, there wasn't much supporting evidence to prove this was the case. Another potential date puts the start around 1993 to 1994, as evidenced by a Q&A with Monaghan for the film Kingdom of Heaven. Well, uh, Ridley inspired me. Tripoli, I, I was writing it as a screenplay, and I knew enough of the industry to know that it would be very hard to get it made. So I turned around and I started to write it as a novel. I got kind of frustrated because I knew it should be a movie and I, I just uh, gave up, got a coffee, went in the other room, flipped on the TV and The Duelist was on, you know, which I hadn't seen since it was in the theaters. And then I thought, ah, yeah, that's how you do it, <laughs> you know. So I went back, chucked the pages of the novel away and redid it as a screenplay. Monaghan rewrote Tripoli into a short story, a prose piece titled Romantic that was published in Old Crow View, a literary journal in Massachusetts. The 16-page story contains two copyrights, one from 1997 and one from 1993. When nothing came out of these early attempts, Monaghan continued writing comedic work for several publications, such as Spy and Maxim. But when Spy went under, Monaghan began working on a new novel, The Lighthouse. The film rights to the novel were quickly bought by Warner Brothers and Gore Verbinski signed on as director. Monaghan was even hired to write the screenplay adaptation. Although the project never moved beyond early planning, the experience would help Monaghan to become one of the most well-known writers around. In 2001, while Ridley Scott was in the middle of the press tour for Black Hawk Down, he received a call from Lisa Elzey, president of his production company, Scott Free. Scott had asked her to look for a writer in the story that would be perfect for a longtime interest of his, Knighthood and the Crusades. For many years, the two were unable to find a story compelling enough for a feature film, or a suitable writer for that matter. But in early fall of that year, Elsie came across Monahan's script for Tripoli and decided that he would be the perfect candidate for Scott's project. It took Scott some convincing to look at the script, though. He had already made two desert set films and wasn't eager to return there for a while. Eventually, he agreed to read a sample of Tripoli and quickly fell in love with it. Its subject matter struck a chord in the director, a hero trying to live by a moral code but being opposed by a structure of evil or misfortune. He was hoping to rekindle the might that he obtained with Gladiator. By making Tripoli, Scott would be making a historical picture that was about a theme everyone cared about, which was what is the Middle East today. It was about the vision and how the West and Great Britain came in and invented the Middle East and ignited the cinders. 20th Century Fox quickly purchased the script for a mid-six-figure price, with producers Fred Barron and Mark Gordon attached. Early press described Monaghan's script as a cross between A Man for All Seasons and Lawrence of Arabia. By November, script revisions were underway, although the events of 9-11 brought concerns if the film would even move beyond pre-production. It was during these initial meetings that Scott would also talk to Monaghan about his crusade-themed project. Like Scott, Monaghan had an immense passion for the Crusades, this film, later to be known as Kingdom of Heaven, would ultimately derail Tripoli's production. 
In March of 2002, Variety announced that Scott would direct Tripoli and that he and Monaghan would collaborate on the Crusades project after Tripoli wrapped production. Filming was to begin in either the summer or the fall that year. Pre-production began in Los Angeles, with Arthur Max working on production design and Sylvain Despretz working with the art department. But rather than working out of the studio directly, the crew was operating out of Ridley's offices. For the character of William Eden, it made sense to Scott to pursue Russell Crowe for the role. By the following month, Crowe had signed on to the project. Filming would need to be delayed, however. Crowe was already scheduled to star in both The Cinderella Man and Master and Commander. To fill in the void, Scott decided to direct Matchstick Men that summer. But the project seemed to be progressing well. By June, pre-production work was almost finished. And a July article announced that Scott would return to Malta for Tripoli. The budget was set at $150 million, with Gladiator producer Bronco Lustig handling the production schedule. A scouting mission by Arthur Max with Marco and Lucio Trentini also found several potential locations. The Grand Harbor would serve as the main location to double for both Tripoli and Tunisia, Fort St. Elmo, and Morocco, which would be used for the film's desert scenes. Ben Kingsley was cast in a supporting role, likely that of Hammett, with set construction starting in September and principal photography in February of 2003. In the meantime, Monahan's collaboration Scott made him one of the biggest writers around. He was even hired to write a fourth Jurassic Park film, with producer Kathleen Kennedy mentioning Tripoli as a deciding factor in her decision. However, the good news was not to last for long. Tripoli's cancellation is difficult to pin down to a single issue, but there were three major problems. The first came from Russell Crowe. Despite his enthusiasm for the project, Crowe couldn't hold out on making another film for too long. And with filming having been constantly delayed, the actor left the project in November of 2003. Although Keanu Reeves quickly took over the role, losing Crow also lost a lot of interest in the project. Monaghan agrees with this theory, saying in an interview with Collider, I think that the reason that Tripoli did not get made at Fox at the time is because Tripoli and Master Commander were set in the same era and both had Russell Crowe. The guys upstairs made a decision and went with Master and Commander, possibly because of the franchise considerations. The second reason was due to the complex nature of the script. Although Monaghan's script told a compelling story, it was very dense and not always linear. The spreads recounted that no one could tell when it would be finalized. It was a very thick screenplay, I remember Ridley's assistant described it as parenthetical. It's the kind of stuff you never see in scripts. Monaghan's many rewrites were not able to satisfy the producers either, and they began to question its commercial appeal. But the third issue is possibly the biggest reason of production's cancellation. In late 2002, Scott's daughter Jordan fell ill, forcing him to return to the U.S. Work on all of Scott's projects, including Tripoli and Matchstick Men, was delayed until she recovered. This perfect storm of issues made 20th Century Fox bring the film into turnaround, with co-financing companies kicking the tires. Fox was looking into the possibility of splitting the distribution and production costs with other studios, but not much came of this search. It's possible that once Scott had wrapped Kingdom of Heaven that he might return to Tripoli, However, Heaven underperformed at the box office and received a mixed critical reception. To Fox, it seemed that audiences didn't have much interest in the subject. In their eyes, anything less than a pure-blooded action film would be a bomb, much like how producers viewed another unmade Scott project, I Am Legend. Scott and Crow would reteam over the following years, with the films A Good Year, American Gangster, Body of Lies, and Robin Hood. In the meantime, Monaghan's success would continue when he won an Academy Award for his screenplay on Martin Scorsese's The Departed. He would even reteam with Scott and Crow in Body of Lies. At this time, Monaghan said he owned the rights to the script and was still talking with Scott about making it. He said to the New York Times, Both Lawrence and the Tripoli script show how democracy sometimes can fail to support their allies. People never really fought about the consequences of pulling out of Vietnam. It was all get out of Vietnam, get out of Vietnam and then millions of people died in the aftermath. In democracies, government can move on, and alliances can be broken. But nothing came of these talks, and by 2010, Monaghan announced that Scott was no longer involved with the project. He sort of gave me his blessing to go on with it, if I could. But I haven't really done anything seriously about it. The ownership is complicated because I own the original script, as well as the underlying rights, and Fox owns the so-called sterile drafts, and Mark Gordon is still attached as producer. The last time that the project was mentioned came in May of 2012, during a press event for Scott's upcoming film Prometheus. He stated that although he was still very enthusiastic about Tripoli, the likelihood of it being revived was low. 
It was here that he also confirmed that a personal issue was one of the main reasons the project never fully picked up steam. As of 2020, Tripoli is no longer on either Scott or Monaghan's upcoming schedules. There are five drafts of Tripoli floating around. Although one is undated, the other spanned from February 8th, 2002 to May 9th, 2003. Of these, I read the most recent draft, since it was likely the one meant for filming if it started that summer. The opening scene grabs your attention right away. It's 1804 and the USS Philadelphia tries to rescue a captured ship in the harbor of Tripoli from the Bashaw's pirates. Despite the bravery of the crew, the captain makes an ill-advised move and runs aground. The ship's officers are quickly captured and held for ransom, while the less fortunate ones are put to work as slave laborers. Among the officers are Lieutenants Presley O'Bannon, who is the founder of the Marine Corps, and Parker. News of this reaches President Thomas Jefferson, who informs to Tobias Lear, his Consul General, that he refuses to heed the Bashaw's demands. In fact, he is more interested in declaring war, something that William Eden agrees with. Lear demands that he desist in his rescue attempt and remain in Tunisia. Eden refuses and decides to take matters into his own hands. He confronts the Bashaw directly to release the prisoners, but is refused. Eden is then imprisoned where he meets O'Bannon and Parker. When the USS Constitution launches an attack on Tripoli, Eden, O'Bannon, and Parker are released to stop the attack. Aboard the ship, Eden tells its captain of his plan to overthrow the Bashaw. The Bashaw has an older brother named Hammett, a well-educated and thoughtful man who has been exiled to Egypt. If the US supports Hammett, he could become the new leader and agree to end Tripoli's piracy. The commander agrees to Eden's plan and the three men set off. Monaghan's tremendous skills as a screenwriter shine in this work. His writing, while dense at times, is easy to read and can even be quite poetic. Monaghan could easily have made Eden a Warhawk or William Wallace figure. Instead, while he is hot-headed and opportunistic, Eden is also honorable and moral. He genuinely wants peace and believes in what America represents, even when his contemporaries and even the president don't. While I would have liked to know a little bit more about Eden's background and what inspired or motivated him, He's still a complex character and would have been captivating when played by the right actor. Hammett is presented as a tragic yet hopeful figure with whom we sympathize. Like Eden, he has a dream for a better Tripoli, although he knows the possibility is low at best. He also acts like a mentor for Eden, although he's still more than able to put him in his place when necessary. And when it comes to the action, Monaghan brings it to life by making it exciting and intense, although he never forgets how brutal this all is. The final battle of Derna, in particular, would have easily been an incredible climax, on par with the Siege of Jerusalem and Kingdom of Heaven. With all this said, Tripoli isn't the most historically accurate screenplay. Many historical figures that were involved with the events aren't included, and much of what happens actually took place over several months or even years. This is perhaps best seen with how it portrays the outcome of Derna, which significantly deviates from the actual history. However, I never felt like I was being lied to, the creative licenses that Monaghan took weren't too far removed from the historical facts and fell in line with the script's themes. For a massive and undeniably expensive historical piece like Tripoli to re-enter pre-production, I would imagine that studios would ask two questions. Would viewers today still be interested in this story? And would this story still have relevance today? In both cases, I believe the answer would be yes. It is important to remember that Monaghan's original draft had been sold well before the Iraq War started. I would argue that it's more of a commentary on America's involvement with Afghanistan during the Cold War and their conduct in the Gulf War. After the Cold War, America lost interest with Afghanistan and let the Mujahideen loose. With the Gulf War, the country declined to support the Kurdish uprisings against Saddam Hussein. Refusing to take proper action or keep one's promise would eventually come to haunt the U.S. in the new millennium. However, such actions could also lead to imperialism, or perpetual conflict if handled poorly. If Tripoli was to be tackled by a lesser filmmaker or one with a specific agenda in mind, it could easily have become a one-sided propaganda piece. Monaghan achieved a proper balance between the two that could have opened the door for future debate. Made to date, the story could also become a lot more cynical. It may also need to be adapted due to how politics have changed over the past 20 years and how audiences' attention spans have shrunk. Although it's likely that Tripoli will not be made, the story of how it almost came to be is an interesting one. 
It shows how a director tried to replicate the success of one film and how it helped to begin another writer's career.